Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Welcome to the 2013-14 year for the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at Vanderbilt. At this, as this year's president and uh, <clears throat> a very shoddy replacement indeed for the immensely able Don Bishop, it is my uh, pleasure to welcome you and to help get this very pleasant evening started. We begin tonight with something truly new. The O-L-L-I at Vanderbilt Steel Drum Band. Before they perform, allow me to introduce to you their dedicated and um, fearless leader, uh, Matt Britton of the faculty of the Blair School of Music. Matt is a percussionist of the first rank, clearly passionate about making music. He's been in the recording studio with many of the best known artists, including Kenny Chesney, Lee Greenwood, Louise Mandrell. He's brought new life to the Grand Ole Opry stage with a set of bongos and congas and timbales and more things than they ever dreamed they'd see. He's also performed with the Nashville Symphony at Carnegie Hall. His resume is not limited to Nashville. You've heard his jingles on Live with Regis and Kelly, and he traveled across the Pacific recently to teach steel drum to students at the Taipei International Summer Percussion Camp. I would hazard a guess, though, that wherever he has been, no group assembled before him has been like the group assembled here. <laughs> they offered a special challenge and a special opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Britton and the Osher Steel Drum Band.
All right, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, a big hand to the very first Osher Steel Drum Band. I've had a, such a great time working with them over the summer, and uh, Norma Clippert asked me to just tell you a little bit about the instruments, real quick brief history about where they're from, and show you a little bit about how they work, and then we've got a, a, another song to play for you. So the steel pans, or steel drums, came from the island of Trinidad, furthest most, uh, furthest most southern island in the, in the Caribbean chain. And everything you see up there, even though these are shiny and look like they were, they were manufactured, everything you see uh, is made out of a 55-gallon oil barrel. Handmade, handcrafted. They've tried to figure out a way to, to stamp these things out, but there's just no way. They still take 55-gallon barrels and handcraft these things. And it's set up a lot like a choir, soprano, alto, and tenor, bass, tenor and bass voices. So the people that are playing the melody uh, are these pans right along the front, the silver ones. And as you can see inside, there's a series of indentations. And the bigger indentations make the low notes, and the smaller indentations make the high notes. So these folks across the front are playing the melody, kind of like a lead singer or the first trumpet, uh, first violin in an orchestra. So they have a big responsibility of, of, of playing the melody. Over on this side, as you can see, everything but this front row has groups of two, three, or, or more barrels because the indentations are getting bigger. These are called double seconds, and they're kind of like the right hand of the piano, kind of like the alto voice. And they play the upper harmony, and they move back and forth between the two barrels to make their, their parts work. And then the back row, this whole section right back behind the leads, are called guitar pans, because their job is kind of like a guitar player. They play lower harmony, and they have groups of three barrels, because their indentations, some of their low notes, the, the notes they're playing are about that big. So uh, their job is to cover the lower harmony, and then we've got the bass pans, the great big, the ones that actually look like oil barrels because none of the, the skirt is cut off. It's the full barrel. And as you can see, it takes six and four barrels to make up a set. And they move deftly back and forth between all six barrels to make the, uh, make the song work. So all told, that's how a steel drum band works. Comes from the island of Trinidad, and we've learned throughout the summer a little bit about the history and how these instruments are made, uh, and just talked a little bit about the culture as well. Um, the actual Vanderbilt Steel Band program started back in 2004 with seven students, and now, including the Osher Band, we're well over 60. Uh, I've got a beginning, intermediate, and advanced steel band made up of the, the Vanderbilt students. And I've got a band called the First and Ten Steel Band made up of Vandy football players. <laughs> so we've got to take the stands and raise them up as high as they'll go when they, those guys come in. But I've never had the opportunity. I didn't know until I ran into Norma uh, through the, uh, the performance we did down at TPAC. I had no idea about the Osher Institute. And what a great thing. I'm so glad we stumbled onto each other. And she emailed me after the TPAC performance asking if I'd like to offer a steel drum class. And sure enough, all these folks signed up. And we've just had a great time learning the instrument. They've done a great job all in, what, how many weeks? Ten weeks? They learned all, these, all this stuff, these two songs, in ten weeks from zero. None of them obviously had ever played before. So one more time, a big hand to them for their efforts. We've got one more song for you. It's a traditional island tune. Harry Belafonte made it popular back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and it's just a, a song that everybody knows. Feel free to sing along. This is our version of Jamaican Farewell.
once again, let's hear it for the Osher Steel Band. Great job, y'all. <laughs> Would also like to let you know that this class is going to be continued. So if you're interested in learning how to play the steel drums, it starts up again, I think, on September 22nd. So see Norma out in the lobby. Talk to me. I'll be out in the lobby as well after we get done putting all this stuff away. We'd be glad to talk to you out there and get you going if you're interested in doing this. Once again, thank you. Thank you to those who are steel band. Oh, a thousand thanks for getting us off to a bang-up start. Thank you, Matt. How do you follow that? Uh, <laughs> it's sort of tough. Well, uh, as Matt just told you, that rousing performance is something you can aspire to join in. It gives me great pleasure to remind you that uh, the Osher Steel Band is continuing into the fall. If you think you'd be interested, I would say sign up tonight at the registration table. There aren't that many slots available, so don't wait too long. This uh, performance is also an illustration of our hope in the OSHA program to expand the kinds of opportunities for lifelong learning experiences we bring to our members. This summer, we offered a wide range of different new opportunities. Our members are not just playing steel drums, they're writing memoirs, uh, improving photographic skills, engaging themselves in a wide range of issues and activities. When you look at the fall brochure, visit the website, look over the calendar that's available tonight, you'll see a host of opportunities for growth and development. Since a number of these do come up too late for the brochure, please remember to check that website early and often. And speaking of those opportunities, let me remind you with a few words about what's happening the next few weeks that you see on that calendar that has just been distributed. Let me start with the core of our program, the fall term lecture series. Not all of our fall term faculty can be with us tonight, but we're fortunate to have several, and I want to is introduce them to you. I'll ask them to stand one by one, and would you hold your applause, please, until we've introduced all. Uh, Billy Teets, who will be teaching in the uh, Hot Topics in Astronomy course. Alexandra Sargent, who will guide us through the history of fashion. Michael Hodges. Michael? Ah, oh, Michael is not here. I'll chastise him properly. Uh, he told me he was going to be here. Susan Kevra, uh, who will look at American social history through the lens of dance and Diane Sasson, uh, who will be discussing the very complex and interesting history of Shakers in America. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Next, I want to mention plans for this year's Lunch and Learn program. Our theme this year is one that is obviously appropriate for Nashville entertainment. The first session will be October the 22nd. It will feature Alan Valentine talking about sustaining the Nashville Symphony, a subject that's been in the papers and in a great many conversations lately. Third, let me remind you of the next special event for this fall, an opportunity to visit the Bruce Monroe Light Exhibit at Cheekwood. It's scheduled for Thursday evening, October the 3rd, I hope as many as possible can put that on your schedule. We also hope many of you will join us for the Fall Foliage Train Ride, another new event, on October 26th. Also, let me point out that we've begun to explore active partnerships both within the university and beyond. The website has information about special programs at the FIST, for example including two very special lecture programs on October the 28th and November the 4th. Then the very next day, November the 5th, there's the Chancellor's Lecture Series. 
moderated by author John Meacham, who is on campus this fall. The program will feature Tom Brokaw and the two sons of Arthur Schlesinger, Jr. Discussing a recently released book of Schlesinger's letters. You're also going to be invited to attend an opening at the Vanderbilt Art Gallery and to participate in special Saturday programs being offered by Vanderbilt on top of the opportunity to learn how to play the steel drum. <laughs> well, who are the people responsible for these opportunities? Four groups, plus two very special people. There are a great many able folk at work. First and foremost, of course, are our super executive director, Norma Clifford, and her very capable associate, our program coordinator, Dottie Rager. <laughs> Say nice things to them when you get back out in the lobby. Uh, there are also a large number of your fellow members who serve on the three committees whose brainstorming leads to the offerings you find in the brochure and on the website. First, there is the Curriculum Committee, uh, chaired by Paul German. Uh, I thought I saw Paul coming in. I must have missed him. The members of that committee have devised the uh, lecture series for this fall, and as you can see, it is a wonderful series indeed. Are the members of that committee who are here willing to stand so people can pick at you? <laughs> Please do. Uh, thanks so much, Bill. <laughs> You're not the only one I know. Uh, next, we, we need to thank uh, Maydean Eberling and the uh, other members of the Lunch and Learn Committee, uh, by a bit of hard arm twisting, we persuaded Maydean to add an extra year to her term. Uh, would the members of that committee who are with us please stand? It's going to be an outstanding year. Thank you so much. <laughs> then there's the Special Events Committee, responsible for tonight and for the visit to Cheekwood and for the fall train excursion, and they have all sorts of other ideas. Hmm, strange things are happening, but that's been known to happen before. Uh, thank them, and finally, thank to the brave souls who have agreed to serve on the board of directors and try to keep me in line. Uh, think of them as the search and rescue team who will keep the program on course despite all the president fails to do. Uh, my fellow directors, please stand wherever you are. Thank you so much for all you do. Now that you know who all these people are, please speak to them. Give them your ideas about lecture courses, about lunch and learn subjects, about institutions in the community we need to partner with. Help us to keep the program growing and vital. Now, the agenda says, <clears throat> Remarks of the President. Sorry about that. You can't win them all. I do, however, promise to be brief. Our theme for this evening is, as you've probably already guessed, involvement. In particular, the Board have asked me to emphasize our desire to involve our returning members more fully in the growing range of programs and also to bring in an increasing number of new members to share in these experiences. First, I invite each of you to involve yourselves more deeply in the intellectual opportunities the program has provided ever since its beginning as the Vanderbilt Retirement Learning Program. I know from personal experience that this group is more than capable of asking insightful and very challenging questions on the widest possible range of topics. Keep it up, both in the question and answer sessions in most of the sessions, and in particular in the exchanges that occur after the sessions are over. Our faculty are not shy, nor are your fellow members. Added insights in those post-class discussions are often the best part 
of those sessions. Second, let me repeat our plea that you let us know about new opportunities we can offer. Do you have a course in mind you would like to take or maybe teach? Tell us. Would you want us to think about starting a book group? What about storytelling? This group includes people with fascinating experiences that need to be shared somehow. How can we do that? Third, let me ask you to consider becoming involved in helping us to keep the cost of the program affordable. We know we offer one of the great bargains in town, and your board, we're dedicated to keeping it that way. You know, however, as well as we do, that costs rarely go down, whether we're talking about the price of gas for the shuttle vans or the cost of a new microphone for our lecturers. On the tables tonight, you have seen, or soon will, cards with the slogan, 2020-2.0. Let me start with that last 2.0. The reason we are called the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute is simple. The Osher Foundation has lifelong learning as one of its interests. They looked at the Vanderbilt Retirement Learning Program and decided this would be the program in Tennessee to which they would lend financial support. We ultimately succeeded in applying for and receiving a $1 million grant from that foundation, and we changed our name. The 2.0 on that card stands for the second million dollars we would like to apply for from that foundation. We know the foundation is going to be phasing out these endowments over the next year or two. So this is likely our last chance to be considered. In a meeting with Osher Foundation officials, they emphasized to Vanderbilt officials that one area in which they at the foundation thought we should do more in order to qualify for their consideration is to raise some funds from our own members. And that brings me to the two 20s on the card. They stand for a 20% rate of participation from our members and a total of $20,000 for our annual fund this year. We believe that these are attainable, but we know we're going to have to work at meeting them. Every member of the board has already made a pledge or donation to the annual fund. I've been counting. If everyone here tonight signed one of those cards, <clears throat> we'd be more than halfway to that 20% mark. And I would dearly love that. Fundraising is not a natural talent for me. I went to law school, uh, not to another <clears throat> part of the university's professional school programs. Uh, I know many of you already give to Vanderbilt. If you have not been in the habit of designating your contribution, think about Osher, if you would. Think about us. Finally, let me ask you to spread the word about our programs. Despite all the technology in the world, nothing advertises better than word of mouth. That's the very best way to bring new members to the program. There are extra brochures for you to take and give away. The website has information galore if you can just point people to it. So please, please tell your friends about us. And even tell a few scalawags. Maybe we can help them. And that's it. Once again, welcome. And let me move on to one last item before we go out to the reception. Our executive director, Nora Clifford, is about to draw some lucky numbers for a few of us. 
Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here, and thank you, Bob Covington. He has proven himself to be a true leader, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your leadership. It's been amazing. I'm looking forward to a great, great year. And now we have Susan Gish, who is a member of our steel drum band, who is going to actually draw the numbers for us. We're going to begin by a free term of classes. It can be this term or any other term in the future. 631695. Here, Susan. Here. All right. Great. <laughs> See me at the reception. The next one is for our Cheekwood Lights tour on October 3rd. Six three one six nine two. All right, All right. perfect. And now our, our Ollie at the Opera series that we are really excited about. I don't know if you've heard about it. We've got a lot of new things going on. This is with John Holmes and Dr. Bill Wetzel. And then uh, we are gonna have a look in on the, the, the opera there. So it's gonna be a great series in October. And this is for that. Six three one six three nine. All right, perfect. And lastly, I want to call all the steel drum band members back up to the stage. Our photographer from Vanderbilt was a little late, and we want to get some good photos of the band. And I thank the band and Matt Britton. That was a fabulous performance. Thank you all, and we can go to the reception. Thank you. 